I have two fire alarm systems. I have one in the house and I have another fire alarm system in the garage. Now those two systems are two separate systems. However, a few months back, I tied them together where if one went off, it put the other into supervisory. So as how that works is if the fire alarm was set off in the garage building, that fire alarm system will go into alarm and create a supervisory on the house fire alarm system. Same thing the other way, where if the fire alarm was to be set off in the house, it'll put the garage system into a supervisory. Now the intention of that was if you were in one building or the other, you would be able to know that there is a fire alarm event in the other building without actually setting the whole system off. Therefore, I just relied on the supervisory on the fire alarm panel's piezo to indicate that the other building was in alarm. Now that's fine in the garage where the building is relatively small and that piezo can be heard throughout the building. However, in the house, if the fire alarm system was to be set off in the garage in the night when I might be sleeping and that notification on my phone might not necessarily get my attention. So that's what we're going to be fixing in today's video. We are going to be installing a system sensor chime strobe. This is a multi-tone fire alarm device that can play some quieter, less aggressive, urgent tones than you would see with a typical horn strobe or even the low frequency sounders. But it also has a very unique whoop tone, which is still very loud, but distinguishable from your standard temporal three evacuation tone. This is the chime strobe device I'm going to be installing in the house. And I thought just before we get into the video, I'd just go over briefly kind of how these systems tie into each other. I do have a full video on it, so make sure to check that out. It showed the whole process of pulling wire, adding conduit, installing the modules, programming it, all that. But if you're just here for this, I'll show you how these connect to each other. This fire alarm system in the garage has this monitor module running off this panel. This monitor module is directly connected to the garage fire alarm panel. So is how that works is the SLC comes into one side of this and this is monitoring the house fire alarm system. The normally open zone side of this that is just a normally open circuit monitors the relay, the fire alarm relay on the main fire alarm system in the house. So if that system goes off, it'll close the relay, trigger this module, giving a supervisory on this system. Now let's go take a look at how that works in the house. It's the exact same idea on this system here. This monitor module is ran off this panel. This monitor module is doing the same thing just the other way, where it is monitoring the alarm relay on the garage panel. So if the garage fire alarm system goes into alarm, it closes that relay, triggers this monitor module, and it is programmed, both of them are programmed as a active supervisory. So to put the system into a supervisory, but it's a non-latching supervisory, it's a tracking supervisory. So once the contacts open back up, it will automatically self-restore. That way you don't have to walk around resetting both systems. Building B tie-in. It's a very simple setup. It only needs four wires going between. Two of them are being monitored from the garage panel going to the relays on this panel. And then the other two are coming from this monitor module going to the relays on the garage fire alarm system. I also have a disable programmed on this panel. So I can simply disable garage building B tie-in. Therefore, if it was to be set off right now, it wouldn't give the supervisory on this system. So there's a piezo here in this panel, as well as one at the main enunciator. 
However, the enunciator's up the stairs there, and the panel's way back down in a utility furnace room there. My bedroom is here. Of course, for a fire alarm event in this building, that's not an issue because we have loud low frequency sounders in the hallways, as well as every bedroom has a low frequency sounder inside of it. So that's great, but as I said in the intro, my way of knowing if the garage building is an alarm, if I'm in this building, is getting the text message and email on my phone, or hearing the supervisory in this building, which you can see those locations where there's a piezo is a distance from my room, and I wouldn't have audibility of that. That's why we're installing this chime strobe to create a unique tone that we will be able to hear, and that will only go off on supervisory. So that will only ever sound if this panel gets a supervisory, which it would be getting if the garage building went into alarm. Now this is a much less urgent alarm as it does not affect the direct safety of this building, so I don't need one in every room. One for the entire house will be just fine. The piezo on the enunciator already gets the attention of anyone upstairs much better as it's a much more open concept building on the second floor, though down here where it would be important for me to hear it because otherwise, if I'm not down here sleeping, I will be somewhere where I have access to my phone and will get the notification. So it's only needed in this one area of the house down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install it right by this location in the hallway, right where this device is. So that's what we're gonna get into doing right now. So we gotta pull some wire over to it because it has to be on its own NAC circuit. It's going to be on a NAC circuit programmed as supervisory chime strobe. So we need to cut a box in and then pull wire through this air duct chase bulkhead in the ceiling where we will be able to get it back to our furnace room and we'll have to enter it into our panel somehow. First thing I'm going to do here is cut the box in. I've got my materials here, 1104L box, cotton box. Um, this is what we're going to cut into the wall and use F-clips to hold it in. And I've got my wire here. This is fire alarm rated cable. This is 14.3. It is, uh, they count the ground in here because it's an insulated bonding conductor. So this is 14 gauge, three conductor way oversized for what we need 18 would be just fine however i've got this stuff and i might as well use it up so right here i can't go any higher unfortunately as there's a big beam that runs all the way through the house so i have to go lower than this device i can show you possibly what i mean if we look in the top right here over top of this air duct You can see this big beam right here. Now, this level of the ceiling where that box is, that is actually the ceiling level. It's a lower ceiling here where it's dropped down for this duct. So this big beam, it's like two or three layers of, I can't tell from here, I'm looking through the phone screen, two by 10 maybe, it's big. Don't wanna mess with that. So that ceiling level you could see in there was this ceiling, so that beam's right here. So we gotta drop down lower than this device. And this is my only area where I have access to cut in. Unless I tried on this side through the supply duct, I could possibly get something down there, but it's not guaranteed. I'd rather just go over here where I know I can get to it. I'm going to pop down our device here so I can make sure to line up the box exactly how this one is. This will give a trouble. So I'm going to uh, align this guy and trace out our new box. Get this nice and level. And now we make some holes in the wall. Bit of an awkward angle here because I'm trying to work over my head, but if I get a ladder, then my head's in the way of the camera. So, Q 
key to this because they're good to have a, as a paint sample if you don't know the color. Actually, I think we know this color. So, uh... Okay, now the less fun part of getting a wire pulled up there. I believe we have a pull string left in here I can use. So I just need to get a fish tape up through here and through the top plate. If there is a top plate running through there, there is something in the way, I know that. So I could take that top box out and try and go up that way, or I could try and look from the other side and see if I can look through the camera lens. I've got this box pulled out here and I'm going to try and put the fish tape up the hole that's cut into that beam up there or into the top plate. I've just somehow caused myself a ground fault, but we'll hope that goes away. Last time I had a hole going that way and one going that way. I'm gonna use the one going that way even though our panel's that way because last time I did it, it was before this detector was in and I was able to get the fish tape up there and then catch it with another one with a hook pushed up from there. It was quite challenging. I think the ground fault's back. Okay, that's getting annoying. So I'm just going to pull Mac 2 entirely and that should clear. That's the wrong one. Are we still showing ground fault? I don't know, but we'll just pull it. So then we can't cause the ground fault. We're already open, so that won't give anything new. Got a light up there and I made I made a hook on it and I know it's really hard to see. Okay, I don't know if you can see that there. It's really hard to see, but I I was able to catch the other one there. And yeah, I just can't get it to hold focus, but I was able to catch the other one there. And yeah, there you go. There you go. By the way, this mess here is just some extra that's coiled up in case I ever need to pull it anywhere. There's enough to like add a, add a device, like if I need to splice this into a box to add a detector in here or something like that. So I've tied this on here to one of these pull strings that I've got going to the other end because every time I fish something in, I pull another pull string with it. So you always have one, just like what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna pull this new pull string in. That way we will always have one. Now we just gotta figure out at this end, which is the one that we're going to be using. I think it's going to be that one. That first one I pulled wasn't long enough. So is what I've done here is I tied it on to a longer one. This guy here. And you see this guy is in the room now, coil that old one back up, it just wasn't long enough. And you see we've got lots more of this one here. Okay, I'm going to put this back together up here. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna work on the other end. So we have to get this entered into here. Which I think I might just enter it in the top of this box here. I can bring it in the second 4040 connector. So we'll take the cover off this isolator here and take this isolator off the wall. If we have room in here, that is. We're just passing through, so it won't take up too much room.
Okay, so that's entered in there. And now the whole rest of this, I'm going to strip back. That way we don't have this outer sheathing in the conduit as well. It will cut down on the size of it a little bit. Now I want to get this behind as much as of the stuff in the conduit as I can. If I can help it and not run this ground down there, I will. I'm going to cut the ground here and splice it up with these grounds here because these are all bonded to the box, which is fine because the box has a, a bond of the conduit itself. So this will save on space in the panel and should make it slightly cleaner. Now I'll take the ground off the rest of this. And then we'll put this down the conduit here. And that has already came out right there. We'll do these back up. You always want to put your spices to the side if you can with these modules because they're they're pretty fat in the box. They take up quite a bit of depth, but there's nothing on the side of them. Okay, this will probably be the last time I add anything in this particular box. This one's getting pretty busy. Anything in the future, I'll bring up this one because there's a lot less in that pipe. Okay, we'll tie this onto the knack last. We'll uh, go splice up our box and get that all ready now. We can plug this knack back in too. Then for our box here, we'll break off this guy. Do that, I do want to set these as far out as they can go to get this box nice and recessed in the wall. Okay, there you go. You can see that's good and solid in there. Strip this back here. Now I think this should work, but it's going to be pretty tight for this to fit on there. Okay, so that's not quite going to work. We're going to have to move this box down a little bit. Put the other one up a bit. Okay, I'm not even going to lie. I completely screwed this up. I should have thought about how close they would be together, but I didn't. But it works now and it's solid, so we'll put up our device. We'll put our one positive in start and our negative can loosely go in there but we need our end of line resistor in there and then knack three there we can take that resistor out 
There you go, Horn Circuit Building B Chime is what the NAC's labeled because I've already got it programmed. Last time I had Verifier on, I set this guy up to go off on zone seven only. Now here in Canada, you have to use end of line plates. Your end of line device can't be in the device unless it's the only device on the circuit. If you only have one device, then you are allowed to do that. So put this in there with the negative. And do our positive side. There you go, that's solid. Once we're done, I'm going to add the, the lens on here. We're going to, this is currently at um, whoop low. I think I'll do loop, whoop high volume. So we'll turn that back to number seven, whoop high. I'm gonna put this guy on here. And for the Candela, um, the one above is at 75, so we could do 75 again to match it. Brighten it up a little bit, it's in the long hallway, I guess. And it's gonna have a lens on it. Alrighty. I know it looks a little goofy right now, but it won't look as goofy once it's labeled. Okay, now at the panel here, Actually, I want to get this on the other side of these guys here. So we'll pull this. This is our whole enunciator and everything. So we're going to completely lose our enunciator. And oh, it looks like we're held up on the yellow wire. So we'll take the yellow wire out. Bring our yellow wire back in here. Reterminate that. Push this guy back in. And then this guy here will also give a trouble for the LCD 80. Go, I got that behind, that's where I want it to be. And I'm gonna leave enough in case I wanna add it to that knack instead, because I may want to change that. So I'm gonna loop it down and then back up. And then we'll cut it right here. Strip that guy and that guy. Terminal block will go in here. That way. We'll go on the bottom because we are class B NAX. Go behind our battery connectors. negative there and you see our system has cleared back to normal okay there's that so that looks all right that's all done in there we can close this up here i don't have the yellow lens on yet or it labeled but i'm going to go see if this all works right okay so i'm going to leave the camera in here and i'm going to go out to the garage and set off the building b tie-in essentially
There you can see Supervisory Building B. Okay, that's definitely audible from my room. So there you go, you can see that worked just fine. I've gone ahead and done some labeling here. So I now have garage on either side of the device. I just printed it out on paper and taped it on. It's not that great. It'd be nice if I could get a proper Lamacoid label for right here, that would be awesome. Something that can uh, stand out a little more, but for now, this works. It's uh, gonna be obvious if this device is going. It says garage on it and you can read right under it. it it says where the alarm is, which is gar garage, which is building B on the property. So yeah, now we just gotta put the, the amber strobe on. Okay, now we have the hardest part of the install. That's to install our amber lens. Just kidding. Super easy, they just stick on. This one is model number lens A2. This is the amber for wall mount L series. You gotta get this right. I say that because I've got it wrong before I've ordered one for the advanced series instead. And now it's even more complicated because now there's the LED series of L series. So that just further complicates things. But there you go. If this device was dirty, we would want to clean it before we stuck this on. However, this one's not. So we can peel this right off of here. It's kind of tricky with one hand. Okay, that's peeled off. You can see that there's this sticky stuff on the back. Well, maybe you can't see it, but this part kind of, you can see where it lines up there. And then that will just push on to the device. Just push it on. And I don't recommend you touch the back or the strobe prior, or then you'll get your fingerprints on it. Touch it on the front though, because you can wash that off. So there you go. Alrighty guys, that is the finished install here. So I don't really feel like setting it off again with the amber strobe. It will be the same thing you just saw just with the amber strobe, but you will see that in any of the upcoming monthlies while I set off the garage system, this strobe and chime will be sounding. So that's gonna be it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you do have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below the video. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account at Pickle700 for bonus content, content posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube, extra stuff like that. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.